The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Aaron Stevanis, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds. We're in Perth County today and it's raining, what seems to be the usual right now. Uh, we've had some funny weather this spring. We've had three frost events, uh, some more severe than others, depending where you are. And uh, also here in Perth County, a lot of rain. So what we're gonna do today is tour around in the truck and use the, the camera as our tool to go look at the sins of the spring and see what we can learn for our management strategies for next year. So in this field, the grower uh, used a roller packer, which is normally you know, a fairly good idea. It kind of firms up the seed bed, keeps good, uh, good uh, seed to soil contact on the soybeans. Um, but in this case where we've had heavy rain, we've, it's actually caused some ponding. So what happens is, you, you, since it is, uh, the soil is a little bit compacted, you don't get the good water infiltration. So you don't get it percolating through if you were to say to have a, have a non-packed soil and you can actually cause some ponding. Now this is obviously an extreme condition uh, because here in Perth County, we have had a lot of rain. Um, but uh, this is something that can happen if you, if, uh, if you do get extreme rains after packing. The next thing that, that is an issue, if we do, for example, get some extreme uh, hot weather, uh, we can actually get a crust on this. This soil here is, is a clay loam, so it is a little finer so, uh, soil texture. And what happens is, is as you get the rain droplets, you know, a, along with that fine work soil, it, it kind of explodes the soil, so it makes it even finer. And then uh, the best way to think of it is it's just like putting um, using clay so you got that clay it's fine and then you get some really hot uh, hot uh, conditions with uh, wind and uh, really warm sunlight and you can actually cause a crust which uh, which makes it really hard for the soybeans to come out as the uh, as the mesocotyl is trying to knuckle out of the soil it keeps on pushing harder and harder and sometimes you can actually break um, the cotyledons right off which uh, obviously kills the soybeans so you know, this is one thing that uh, it's a certain circumstance. It's not every year, but something that did happen this year with all the heavy rain. All right, so here's an example of, of two different uh, different soybeans in two different environments. So this one here, this one came out of the soil easily. As you can see, the musicotyl here is isn't swollen. It came up, the uh, it knuckled here, and actually the cotyledons are turning green. So it it uh, it hit sunlight. So this soybean was emerging like it should. This one, on the other hand, has had some trouble. As you can see, the mesocotyl here is more swollen than he, than this one, so it's actually put. It had to push through the dirt harder, so it was it was working harder to make it through. It was just starting to knuckle, so as you can see, the knuckle here was starting to turn green because it was uh, intercepting sunlight, but the uh, the cotyledon was is still yellow, so it hasn't seen sunlight yet. This bean will probably be okay, but it just shows the difference between the two on. Uh, how the, the bean has to work harder to make it through um, tougher soil conditions. Well, I'd like to give kudos to the grower. He did, we do have 30% residue cover on here, so definitely didn't overwork it. Everything looks good that way. Unfortunately, the biggest uh, issue here is just too much rain. We've had too much rain in this area and that's causing all this pot, uh, ponding. One more other management strategy is maybe to use a crow foot packer instead of a roller packer. Uh, the roller packer is just, uh, you know, firming up and compacting the ground, which, you know, like I said earlier, decreases water infiltration. Where the crow foot packer, you wouldn't have that issue. So we just got out of the truck to check the stand and emergence of the this cornfield here. Uh, it's at about two leaf. Uh, as you can see, it, it has had a little bit of frost damage. Um, which isn't a big deal because at two leaf the growing point is still below the ground. So as long as we got some hot weather, which is coming up here, it should easily uh, grow up, grow out of it, and uh, this corn will be up and ready to rock again. Um, the the stand on this this field is pretty good. Uh, it it was it was about six and a half inches uh, spacing, which is right about uh, thirty two thousand plants per acre. Try to look for um, the other thing you look at is emergence, and there there is a little bit of a, a, some emergence issue, an uneven emergence in this field. So now is a great great opportunity to to look at the importance of, of emergence and what that can mean to you. So as you can see in the field here, we have we have two leaf corn. Just to the left of this corn is a, is a later emerger. You know, it's just kind of poking through the ground. 
Um, and so you know, you can lose some yield uh, from this because it is two leaf behind. So a great way to check this throughout the season is uh, is you can stick a flag in it right now. So the idea is you stick a flag in it and uh, as, it, as you get to harvest time, go back and look at that flag. Uh, the chance, the odds are is you're probably gonna have an unharvestable ear. Either you won't have an ear or it'll be an ear that's so small that'll just go right through the combine. So in a situation like this, when you have a, a corn plant that's about two leaf behind, um, in, in one one thousandth of an acre, so if you count off, if you pace off 17 and a half feet, and you do have one plant that's two leaf behind, that can cost you full five bushels roughly. It's four to six bushels, but on average five bushels um, per acre. So it's a good idea to go out flag those fields, check them out, and uh, it'll be a really neat learning opportunity uh, for you um, come harvest time to see what those ears end up looking like. So the question is, how do you fix this? Well, there, there's three easy ways to do that. Uh, first two are cultivate in the cultivation process. So make sure you're cultivating le uh, levelly and also keeping a firm seed bed so the planter doesn't drop in, and you're also keeping the seeds at a nice, even uh, depth. The third part is is making sure your your corn planters in good uh, maintenance. So making sure your gauge wheels are all even, making sure your depths are uh, are all even, and that means getting out of the tractor periodically while you're planting to make sure you have even depth right across your whole corn planter. Uh, as you can see in the in the pictures, that this was a finally fairly finely worked soil bed and uh, it got a pretty heavy downpour so what happened was uh, on the along the outside of the field uh, the water started to gain momentum and as it gained momentum it started to create a rill in the soil so it started uh, driving down picking up uh, soil as it went down the field and kind of dispersed it in the low flat area of the field well, I guess the question asks what can we do in this field for next year to uh, to prevent this from happening again and and one thing would be to leave a little bit more residue and not work it as fine. I know in corn, we do like to have a, a fine and firm seed bed for good seed to soil contact. But on a field such as this with, you know, some topography where you have a higher risk of, of erosion, it probably would be a good idea to leave 30% residue. This would, uh, you know, impede the velocity, the, uh, the momentum of the water, which would cause less erosion. And what you can do as a management thing on your corn planter, if you are using a heavier residue, is to use a, a row cleaner on there. It'll clean the clean away the the residue, so you can still be planting into a good seed bed, and you won't have any uh, any hair pinning in the in the in the trench as well.